Samantha here with Fibers and Floss Canada. Hi, Samantha here, the Huga Stitcher. We're coming to you today, February the 10th, 2024, to wish you guys a very happy Lunar New Year's. This is the first day of our stitch along and we wanted to log on and share our first stitches with you guys. Sam, did you want to talk a little bit about how you came up with the idea for the stitch along this year for us? Yeah, it actually happened organically. I had had this Teresa Wentzer dragon pattern in my collection for a little while and, you know, almost needed an excuse to get started on it. Um, a fellow floss tuber, a fel a, oh, someone who watches my channel, her name's Michelle, the Chinook Crafter, she had commented on one of my videos like, Samantha, you know that next year, 2024, is the year of the dragon. You should start your dragon stitch. And, you know, the more and more I thought about it, I was like, that's genius. Like that, you know, there should be a stitch along. That This is too perfect. The year of the dragon only comes around once every 12 years. And, you know, there's a lot of us that have dragon patterns that um, it's just a perfect excuse to bring them out, to stitch on them. And that's sort of where the idea sparked. And I'm excited to be here today to be able to start my dragon pattern to kick off the um, the stitch along with all of you here as well watching. This is really exciting, yeah. It'll be really good. Do you yes. want to share your pattern, which one you've yeah. chose to stitch? So this is the Storyteller by Teresa Wensler. Is the design I'm stitching. So excited, yeah. I love the <laughs> colors too, like in the mm -hmm. wind stuff, right? There's so much detail in there and all that back stitching is beautiful. Be really, yeah, really it's, nice. It's going to be good, and I've never stitched anything like it. Like, I've done one other Teresa Wensler, but it doesn't have a dragon. It's a Lily Maiden, and mm -hmm. it's so different from this. So I'm I'm really excited. It'll be good. <laughs> what about you? What are you working on? What did you pick? Um, I have chosen to do the Celestial Dragon, and so this one here calls for, like, just a basic white fabric, but I'm actually stitching it on a bright Christmas red Joblin fabric. There was a gentleman who had stitched um, on the red Joblin. Brian Hall is his name and he's on the Facebook group for Teresa Wensler and that's where I got the idea from and it looks gorgeous. So I can't wait to dive in and do that. Um, what fabric did you choose for yours? I'm doing did whatever you like what, or? it was a called for. It's a 28 count Zweigart platinum. Easy nice. peasy. Love it. Yeah, and I then, love your red fabric. It's so cool. It's so yeah, cool. It's definitely different, right? Like, I don't know. It looks yeah. like maybe it wouldn't go well, but um, maybe I'll insert a picture of Brian's. It is unbelievable when you see it and all mm -hmm. the blue beads. It looks really good. And then these are some of the flosses that we have um, spun up and they're ready to go. Spun up. Bobinated. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you're using floss cards, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I have everything ready to go. I'm really excited to give this a go. I've never, you know, also I've never used something like this to kit up one of my projects. So it's kind of fun. I have laid it out exactly how um, Teresa Wensler like charts her DMC. Got it exactly like laid out like that. So it should be easy to find the colors. Um, yeah, I'm Perfect. ready. Good. <laughs> and then... Um, we're gonna put our first stitches in with you guys as well. Yeah. So I think maybe just before we do that quick, we should just kind of recap the idea of the stitch along where um, we want it to be pretty uh, inclusive for everybody. So it's not a particular pattern, it's any pattern with a dragon in it and that you guys can join at any point in the year. So it can be something you've already stitched, it can be a whip, it can be a new project, it can be a retired piece that you've you know tucked away a long time ago Pull yeah. it back out. You guys can stitch on that. And you can start now. You could start in August. You could start at any point. Um, yeah, we have lots of plans for you guys for the year. Lots of surprises throughout the way. So it'll be good. Yeah. There's do you want to also, add anything? Yeah, I do. There's um, Instagram. We're using the hashtag Year of the Dragon Sal. And if you need a little inspiration of like, oh, I want to join. What should I do? Like if you want to get some inspiration, some ideas, a lot of people have already posted what they're going to stitch. I've seen baby dragons. I've seen full coverage dragons. I've seen long dog sampler, you know, with dragons in it. Um, I, I believe there's a dragon pattern by Modern Folk Embroidery. Have you seen that one? 
Yeah. So cool. You know, like there are, when you go looking, you will find dragons <gasps> in everything. <laughs> Puppy dog. <laughs> it's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you can find inspiration um, from other stitchers and it doesn't have to be big. It could be small, um, whatever. Just join us. Find something that's in your collection, something you've started already, or find a new designer on Etsy. Go find a dragon and come stitch with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pause and um, go to our stitching. What do you think? Sound yeah. good? Okay. Yep. See you in a sec. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, we we don't really know what we're doing. We're trying some brand new software. We hope it works. We hope our orientation is okay for you. Um, if someone's upside down, we'll figure it out for next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, here is my pattern, the Celestial Dragon, and here is my red fabric. It's all ready to go in the frame. And Sam, you've got yours there too? Yep, ready to go. I think, hope you can see it. I've got my fabric and my needle. I've got the first leg of my stitch ready to go. This is so exciting. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about the other day is, you know, when you start a cross stitch, are you, um, your very first, when you very first come up with your needle, are you, which leg of the stitch are you coming up on? Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, there's a right and a wrong way to put your, where to put your needle in? What? Do you know that? I know. What are you talking about? <laughs> I know. Let me show you because I was just thinking about this and I was like, wait a minute. I hope you guys can see this. Okay. Hmm. Is that focused? It looks a bit focused. So um, basically, you know, when you, you look at your linen, you have two pieces going up and down and two pieces going sideways threads, right? And so when you go in your bottom left corner of your X and you're going to go up and then you're going to come down you want to actually come up against the leg of one of those um, stitches don't know if I can really I'll insert a picture actually to show you guys but really what happens is when you look super super close you'll be able to see that one of the legs um, I don't know if you can see sound but you have to come up right here I'm going to try and bring it really close where am I? There we go. Um, so you're coming up to the, you're going to lean against one of the fibers that's there. You want to be against a fiber that's going to be going up and over the thread above, not one that's going to be tucked under the middle thread above. Does that make sense? No, I need you to it's show kind me of in confusing. person. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I will. Um, I'll put a picture on there actually for you guys because it's super interesting. And and if you put it on the right one, your stitches will actually lay quite a bit flatter, which I didn't know. Oh. So, yeah, like a bit interesting. I've I've heard like from working at a cross stitch store that you're supposed to like technically right now I'm doing mine wrong what I've heard from people who work at the store okay <laughs> this sounds crazy but when I first learned it I was like what so this orange band the Zweigart yeah band that you would see on all the cross stitch like this is technically supposed to be on your left like it's supposed to be on the left when you're stitching oh, so I should okay. technically I don't know. It has something to do with the weave that it, the way that the fabric is made, um, mm -hmm. that's the direction that you should, you know, should be stitching up and down like this, but maybe that's what you're trying to explain. Like, um, the way that the weave is, is made. Um, but when I got this piece of fabric, you know, typically I would use this, this orange band on the left side. Um, but because when it arrived, it's like, uh, 18 by 27 I had to I had to turn it so I've decided to put mm -hmm. my orange strip up at the top okay uh, so anyways one little tidbit for you I don't I, know if um, that, how that would be relevant though like they're talking know. about in terms of stretching maybe? possibly yeah I, I bet you some people will um some pros <laughs> Who've been around longer than us, maybe, who would be like, um, yes, I've learned that before too. Um, you're always supposed to have it going a certain direction. And it sounds like that's sort of what you're trying to describe with um, the way that the linen threads are laying a certain direction, because there's some that go up and down and some that go left to right, right? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. I'm starting at the tongue and it's like this long piece of, piece of fractional stitches. People, you guys might be watching going, what the heck are you doing? But it's going to be right at the end. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's doing anything um, special for today. I know in Vancouver there's a huge um, festival in Chinatown with the oh, big really? dragon and stuff on the street, you know? Cool. It would have been, it would have been really, really cool to go to that, but mm-hmm. also very, very busy. So maybe next year I'll go to that. Well, I guess it wouldn't be dragon any next year. Hmm. That's too bad. I should have gone to that. Are you guys doing anything in Winnipeg, do you know? Um, not that I know of. I don't know. Our weather is really weird. I mean, I hate to change the subject to weather, but it's been really, really strange here in Winnipeg. We Mm -hmm. had rain, um, yesterday and today. And that is very, like, unlikely for us to have rain in February. Like, Mm -hmm. since I've lived here, it's been how many years, Erica? Like, I don't even know. Almost 20. 20. Yeah, it has not, like, this is the first time, usually in February, we are experiencing, like, very, very cold temperatures where you're like, I can't believe it gets this cold, you know, minus 27 to 30s to 35, like, just crazy, crazy temperatures, and it's, like, plus two, (laughs) and it's raining, like, what? There was one viewer that was talking about, um, she said, you guys should talk about your weather in Canada. Because she yeah. was from Florida or something, right? And That's what I was thinking um, of. Yeah, exactly. And I thought it was funny because I don't know how many times I've met people that live elsewhere and they have this impression that Canadians in the wintertime, you know, they live in igloos and, um, Stop. you know, have dogs. <laughs> yes, seriously. And no. we totally don't. We live just like everybody else. It's crazy. Um, yeah. But, like, I'm in Vancouver, so I'm, I'm on the West Coast, and it's super mild mild in the West Coast. Like, we might have mm-hmm. snow for a couple days. Um, nothing crazy, though. And then that's about it for us. Like, we just – oh, I have to look at my pattern while I'm talking to you. I know. I'm um, having... <laughs> but, yeah, it's nothing crazy for us, that's for sure. It's pretty mild. We actually have, like, our crocuses and stuff are coming up right now, too. Um I Which saw a photo. But. Yeah, I saw a photo that you posted a, a few days ago, and I was like, "What? Your grass is like super green, and everything looks lush." I'm like, "Stop! We're <laughs> just like gray dirt everywhere, like from all the sand from the sand trucks that have come down our street. Everything is just really, really dirty and gray. Yeah. Like, there's no green. <laughs> there's nothing growing yet. What? It's it makes me <laughs> sad because I like the snow and I like the cold." you know, weather in the winter time. And um, this weekend, it was super sunny when I post or last weekend, I posted that picture. Um, mm-hmm. And my husband had said, you know, grass grows at 10 degrees Celsius. And what? And I was like, Oh, like, it's, it's almost that right now. Yeah. It was pretty, he was like, I hope it doesn't get too warm. He's gonna have to start cutting the grass. That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah, I can appreciate, like, the earth needs winter, you know? Like, it needs to freeze. It's good for the ground and nature and all the things. It's part of nature for it to have winter, right? Like, especially for a lot of the farmers out here, like, um, we've heard you know, on the radio that like farmers are starting to get worried that they're not going to get enough moisture. Like if it doesn't snow more, if we, um, cause they're used, their fields are used to getting way, way more. So it's kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, you know? Oh my goodness. So people don't know this about me, but Sam, you know this, I'm so famous for working with a short thread and here you guys can all see it very, see what I'm doing. See how short my thread is. <sighs> so typical, isn't it? Yep. You think I was super restricted on my floss that I have, but I'm not. <laughs> and I, I can't see yours, Erica, but are you stitching in a cue staff? Oh, I am, yeah. Yeah. I'm... I will change mine into a cue snap after I'm done here. Because I like I like stitching that way, especially on a Teresa Wensler. This is easy stitching. Yeah. I mean, this is just a bit of the border. It's like very very simple, so it's okay for right now. But um, I'll move into a cue snap. My um, this is all my stitches so far, are fractional stitches, except for six, and mm. they are all 
all over the place here. Like I'm making a diamond shape right now. I don't know. Okay. Oh, there goes my dog. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> my dog's going to start talking to your dog. <laughs> I've got some of my kids are home today and they're coming inside. Mm -hmm. My dog all excited. Um, yeah. Well, I have a I have one daughter home today too because her uh, mouth is really sore. She was at the orthodontist yesterday, and mm -hmm. they like moved brackets around. They like took off three brackets, I think, and um, put new ones on to like readjust them, and mm -hmm. and then new wires and all. she's like, "Mom, oh, like this is the worst," <laughs> you know. And she <laughs> she can't eat anything. Oh, it's oh, like, gonna be a couple days of pain, but. When she woke up this morning and she was like, mom, look at my teeth. And I was like, oh, my goodness, you can already see how much they've changed just overnight. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, OK, that is, that's got to be painful. <laughs> and it's kind of Absolutely. <laughs> so that's she's the home worst. Today, I remember those days. Yeah. Yeah. It's still painful, right? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to mention, too, that there are. Oh, hold on. Sometimes I have a hard time counting and stitching and talking at the same time mm -hmm. um there are some free Teresa Wensler patterns that uh are oh, online you. yeah I thought I'll post the link to it here for people um I don't know how people feel about the patterns from Teresa Wensler the dragons being free but you know she no longer endorses the sale of her dragons and They've all been taking off market for personal reasons, and that's fine. Um, but at one point, there was a lot that she had offered up for free. And mm -hmm. so what had happened was there are still some stores online that um, you can get some of her free patterns with the dragons. And there's actually some really cool ones as well. And the reason why I mention it is because there's one in particular I thought I might stitch. Um, and if for anyone who is thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'd like to do a Wensler, but they're not sure about it. Um, you know, they're apprehensive about the size of the stitch or, um, you know, the investment with the floss or that sort of thing um, it is a nice way to kind of test it out they are smaller um, and at the time when she released them there is writing all over the patterns as well saying like take it photocopy it you know love it pass it on get everybody stitching these things and um, anyways there's one that I really liked it's called stretch and it's made as a bookmark so it's um I don't know, 11 inches or something by like three inches. And it's mm -hmm. a really long, skinny blue dragon, like blue and purple. Nice bright colors. And I think the pattern only uses maybe like, I don't know, 15 different colors of floss. Um, and it has a nice golden like Celtic border around the edge. And then she's got a couple other ones, right, that I think you had from when you were working at the Cross Stitch store too with yep. the squares like the square format with a little dragon and they're about, what would you say those are like five or six inches? Yeah, they're Where? not like huge. They're, yeah, they're, they're pretty, pretty small, small, right? They're cute though. They're so cute for somebody who is just wanting to get, like to try a Teresa once or why not? And it's a dragon too. That's fun. Like yeah. doing the bookmark stretch would be like a perfect little project to try one out on. And mm -hmm. then you could see like, okay, I liked it. I, I, I know what I'm in for now then you could try like a bigger Teresa Wensler. Why not? That'd be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'll set, I'll put a link there too. And if anybody's new as well for the stitch along, um, I've created a playlist for um, Year of the Dragon. And so if you have any questions that we haven't answered in here, you can always go there as well. And that's on the Fibers and Floss Canada web um, YouTube page. Mm -hmm. And uh, should answer some questions or you can reach out to Samantha or myself directly. We're always happy to answer your questions. Yeah. I hope this works out well. Um, it took us a long time to sort of figure out how we were going to film. Um, how would we make this work? And if this goes well, like um, if you're watching this and you're enjoying this video, let us know if you have any tips for us. Like, how about you try doing it like yeah. this? Or I didn't like that or whatever. Maybe the sound isn't good. I don't know. <laughs> let us know because it would be amazing if we could get this figured out, um, you know, get it to work well and enjoyable to watch we could do it more often like it doesn't necessarily Absolutely. have to be a 
dragon stitch like we could be stitching and hanging out and if people are enjoying just listening to the conversation and seeing the stitches that could be fun to do erica i think that would be really cool yep i would totally do that for sure that yeah. would be nice well it's if a great it way for well, us we'll have to see <laughs> it's a great way for us to get together and, and like to chat and for others to be like to get to know us a little bit more maybe off camera so to speak like I don't know. It's a different feeling than when you're recording a floss tube. I feel like absolutely, yeah, much yeah, more kind of formal. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm surprised my kids haven't been over here yet asking what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's still outside, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Well, I've got the tongue is coming along. It's, I can't wait. To actually, I'm thing. starting at the the very center of this stitch is actually the head of the dragon. The very tip of the tongue goes right into the center, oh, and. That's so yeah, and I thought I'm going to start there, actually, because um, I really want to get into some of the, I love bright colors, so I want to get into stitching some of the bright colors in the dragon. It would be really, really fun. Mm -hmm. I don't think we mentioned it, but your pattern um, is, like, the center of it. Not the dragon, but just on the outside of the dragon. It's covered in beads, right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you guys, there are 1,300 petite beads on this pattern um i can't That's get the crazy. pattern now i kind of tossed it out of the way but um the whole background you know when you look at the pattern it's all white and then there's all these little blue dots well the blue dots are actually clusters of four a grouping of four beads and i'm not looking forward to that i'll tell you that much mm. right now ah. all that invisible thread oh yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yes, but, but I think you have to do it. It's so beautiful, you know? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, when it comes down to it and you start adding them in, you're like, okay, I'm beating, I'm doing this. But it's going to add such an, a unique sparkle um, in a in a spot of the design that I you wouldn't think is sparkly by looking at the photo, right? Like, it's going to look so good. Yeah. It'll be awesome for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had all this stuff I thought, oh, we should talk about that when we do our filming. And you think I can remember what any of the stuff is? I cannot. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, uh, I wanted to talk about your um, your thing, your 10-10-10, your 3-10 method. Oh, yes. Okay. You were so, talking about doing because yeah. I wanted to give you crap. So if anyone who doesn't know, Sam's doing this. Um, do you want to tell them what it is? You're, you haven't really well, coined your term yet, have you? No, I what haven't. And I've been trying to come up with something be like, because this, I think a lot of, maybe not everybody, because some people like to stitch like two or three projects, you know, and that's how I used to be. I used to just stitch on one project at a time, maybe a couple in a year sort of thing. But because I started a floss tube channel, um, it, you know, I wanted to have more content to show, obviously, right. And um, it just sort of like started this process of, of working up my whips and getting more, um, trying different variety and all of these things. And I, I really, it was inspired by um, having different projects at different stages going so that I would have the goal is to have 30 projects. 10 of them are at the close to the end stage where you have lots of the, the pattern done. 10 of them are in the middle. You can see where it's going. It's exciting. You know, it's starting to come together. And then 10 projects that are in the beginning stages where you either you just started it, you, you don't have a lot to show, right? Like you show mm -hmm. it and it's great, but there's not a lot there yet. It hasn't really built on, you know, look at the stitching we're showing today. Like there's not a lot to look at like woo yeah um so I really that's where it was inspired from um just to have different variety of stitching um to show on floss tube and for me to enjoy as well the experience of getting close to an end and and that sort of thing so mm -hmm. I was trying to come up with an idea like what would we call this like my daughter came up to me we were talking about it I I was talking about it and she's like so like 310 and I'm like, yeah, 310. And then I'm like, wait a minute, that's the color of DMC. Like everybody knows 310, like um, the yeah. color of DMC floss, like 310 method or something, or 10, mm -hmm. 10, 10, or I don't even know, but I'm hoping I would that just, something. I'd like what to point think? out that you have more yeah. than 10 starts. <laughs> I, I know, but that, but everybody <laughs> thinks like, but that's just it, Eric. It's a goal of mine to get to 30 whips and to get all of my 30 projects fitting into that 10, 10, 10. I know. And that's, that's the method. 
it's like I had lots of projects that are in different stages and now I need to focus on getting, I have 27 whips and I need to mm-hmm. get them into fit to 10, 10, 10. So I'm going to get 10 projects that are going to be close to the ending and I'm going to stop. I'm not going to work on those projects anymore because I'm trying to build 10 of them right. up to that stage. Um, and then I'll stop. And then when I get 10 that are in the middle, perfect. Now I have 10 starts, like excellent. So mm-hmm. that's sort of the way it's going. It's it, anybody could really could try this. If they have lots of projects, they could sort them out and be like, Hey, I have two that are in the ending stage and I have two that are in the middle and everything else is a start. Well, okay, let's start moving them. Let's let's get, which ones are in a starting stage that you can move into the middle and build up your middles, you know, and then gradually right. some of them will move into the ends. Like, I just think it's a great way to, um, to keep motivated on projects and to keep moving. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Absolutely. That's, yeah. Like I find it funny are... because I was, um, well, you and I had talked about this earlier this week, but we both watch um, Brenda and the Serial Starter. And Laura had decided that, okay, I like your method and I'm going to get all these stitches together and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she wanted Brenda to help her sort of categorize everything into her three groups. And so she got to her 10 starts and, you know, she has so many starts, right? And I almost pee my pants laughing at Brenda and how she was just you you have to whittle it down you cannot have more than 10 and she had like she's like I have bags at home like I have more bags of stuff I can bring over <laughs> right it was so funny but yeah. and then I thought oh now you have 12 and now I think are you at 13 now with stitching this well so don't tell this- Laura or she's gonna have to give Brenda crap for limiting <laughs> her to 10 <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think that's just it. Like now I have, this will be my 13th start. And so I have looked at my starts and been like, which ones can I move over that are close? And I have a couple. So I'm like, okay, I got to get them out of there. Got to get them out of that section. Which ones are you going to move over? Do you know? I don't have the cards out in front of me here to look at. um, Mm -hmm. But I did move one of them in my last video. I talked about um, the snowman wish you. It was oh, yeah. considered a start, and now I've moved it into a middle. So one's done. And I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, what is the other one? Hmm. Maybe Rapunzel by Nora Corbett? Because I have a lot of her, actually. I have, but she's a big project. It's she's big. big. Yeah. So, like, I've got her face, and that's great. But And a little bit mm-hmm. of her, you know, her hair and stuff. But I have still have a ton of work to do. I just right. realized I hope I wasn't showing the pattern in the video. I hope that didn't happen. It's hard. I can't see. I don't <laughs> like I don't think I've seen it. Okay, good. <laughs> no. Oh, if so maybe oh I'll, if there is something, I'll just put a little sticker or something over top of it. Over it top, it. yeah. Yeah. I would hate I to do that. I know you can't really copy anything out of a corner of a pattern, but still, you know, you don't want to put it on there. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'm going slow. Well, this here. is so fun. I can't wait to see yeah. how everybody's stitches are coming together. And I hope everyone's going to post using the hashtags so we can follow their progress. It'll be really awesome. Yeah, I'm excited too. Um, I think it's going to be a great day. I, I'm looking forward to spending some, I'm going to stitch some more on this, but I'm also looking forward to um, seeing what others have been stitching and sharing what they're um, going to be stitching on. It's going to be so fun. So I look mm-hmm. forward to hearing from everybody and what they're doing. It'll be, be really great. Oh, mm-hmm. are you done? I'm still stitching. I'm so excited to start this. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. but I, I, I can be done. <laughs> I'll be stitching lots more today for sure. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's probably a good, good spot to wrap it up. And, um, yeah, we'll definitely, we'll post this onto Instagram for everybody to see and um, YouTube as well. So, yeah. happy Another Lunar thing. New Year to everybody. Yeah, happy New Year. Yeah, exactly. Happy Lunar New Year. I, um, I was thinking, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, hashtag, oh boy, what was I going to say? I've lost it. It's gone. <laughs> It's gone. The hashtag we're using, like the. No, I don't. I had something else I wanted to mention, but it, uh, I've lost it. It's okay. As soon as we end the call, it will. It'll come back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, very true. All right, sounds really good. Thanks for stitching with us today, you guys. And we hope that you guys all had a bit of a start on your dragon or made some progress on your whip. Um, yeah, remember to post with the hashtag you're the dragon Sal so we can follow your progress. Mm -hmm. All right, take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.